toll, didn't it? And the 60s ended very, very abruptly for you. Um, yes. You had to come up with another hit record, you know, as good as the last one. And then the managers came in, the agents came in, they're all taking a piece. Um, and that drove me down. And then I was working in, you know, like three shows a night and overdoing everything resulted in me contracting tuberculosis. I was close to death. That's what I felt. space, this vacuum, the hospital. Um, I was surrounded by, you know, really nothing but trees and doctors and, and, uh, and, and my books and my guitar and a mirror. And one of the things I did is I covered the mirror. Um, to start get, getting away from the external and start digging deep within myself. A simple garden with acres of sky. I was brought up as a Christian. You know, beyond Christianity, I started to study different religions and Buddhism and Tao, um, you know, Hinduism, Zen, even numerology and astrology. I mean, I was, I was looking everywhere. And in that hospital, um, I think I developed some insights, which then later fed into my music, into my journey. It's quite clear that you were going through that journey of inquiry at that time, weren't you, in the songs? It's all there. Yeah, my songs are, you know, are a kind of narrative to my life. And if you look at them, listen to them, you'll hear all the explanations of where I was and where I was going. After more than a year away, Cat Stevens came back with a new look, a new sound, and songs that perfectly caught the mood at the dawn of the 1970s. Well, I left my happy home to see what I could find out. Mm -hmm. I left my folk and friends with the aim to clear my mind out There was a great feeling of I think failure you know of the 60s but a whole new mob were assembling and um, looking for articulation of this confusion All that period for me was best exemplified by Cat Stevens you know, he was there searching away for something. Well, I hit the rowdy road, and many kinds I met there. Many stories told me of the way to get there. I really did believe that people were looking for something more than you could find in a pipe or a pill, you know, and I really think that, that the songs of Cat Stevens at that time, uh, you know, were really there. I thought they really spoke to another place inside the soul. Uh, 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 a changed man, Cat Stevens released what turned out to be one of the defining albums of the early 70s, T for the Tillerman. T for the Tillerman is a very concise, properly formed record. There's a one coherent thought. Imagine a, imagine a painter hanging his 12 pictures in a gallery and saying, that's my show for this year. That's what he did with that, and it was a very good show. Through descending snow And through the frost and thunder it's not it's not meant to be cool now, I think, to have liked Cat Stevens. Um, but the reality is that absolutely everyone had that album. Well I listen to the wind come how telling me I have to hurry. I listen to the Robin song saying not to worry. I felt 
felt the spiritual searching in his early work. I really felt like that he he was a good soul, a good heart, and that he was a bit lost, but that he was more found than he realized. It's the answer lies within. So why not take a look now? Kick out the devil sin and pick up, pick up a good book now. Mm-hmm. It says on the road to find out. Kick out the devil's sin, pick up a good book. Now, it doesn't say the Quran, it says a good book. Well, you didn't know yet what the resolution might be, did you, to that journey at that point? I think I probably wrote in the beginning the good book, and then I changed it on purpose so that we wouldn't have Bible bashers, you know, who say, well, he's with us, you know. Uh, but I was just talking about the power of a good book in being able to change your life. It's kind of like a premonition (laughs) without knowing it. Now this is an interesting little sequence. When I wrote songs, I had somewhere in the back of my mind my audience. And I knew what a responsibility that was too. A heavy responsibility. I needed to know as much as they needed to know, you know, where I was going next. I've been happy lately, thinking about the good things to come, and I believe it could be something good has begun. Yes, I've been smiling lately, dreaming about the world as one, and I believe it could be someday it's going to come. Out on the edge of darkness, there rides a peace train. A peace train, take this country, come take me home again. The peace train was a kind of anthem, so it was about an individual engaging with a much wider constituency. I mean, this was at the time of the Vietnam War, there was a lot of things going on, and this was a sort of rousing call, wasn't it, peace train? Yeah, the protest movement was very strong already. I mean, the the influence of Bob Dylan and, you know, and and so many artists, and the song grew from there. We tried to record that song, and and it was always best live. Now I've been smiling late, thinking about good things to come, and I believe it could be something good has begun. Oh, peace, strange sound and loud. such a response and that was really a a fantastic um, moment in a way um, to understand what the audience saw me as and what they wanted from me and what I wanted to say it kind of fused Uh, although I couldn't see all the faces that were listening to me Um, I could almost see their souls You've been beautiful. The strange kind of paradox was, that even though I felt very close to my audience, um, after the show, there'd be all these like bodyguards around taking me out, and I said, can't I stay, you know, <laughs> off, you know? <laughs> and uh, so there was a cutoff, you know, between me and the audience. And that left me alone a lot of the time. So you stayed here with your parents for, for quite a long time, you know. So while you were famous and prosperous, you were still living upstairs. That's right, yeah. And that was like where I wrote most of my songs. I mean, Wild World was written upstairs, you know, and uh, so many of the songs. Did the fans know you were up there? A lot of fans used to come to the door, and my dad used to look after them, you know. He was kind of uh, amused by it all. And when you moved out, where did you go to at that point? 
I finally moved away from here, I think around 73. 